Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make animations and even export video in Photoshop. Everyone knows Photoshop as an industry standard image editor, but did you know it can also do animations and even video? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make an animated GIF, GIF, whatever it is, I'm gonna show you how to do that in Photoshop and then we're gonna look at how we can export that as a video and even open existing video files. Let's get to it. So here we are in Photoshop and I've set up what I want to animate and I've put all of my layers in effect at the start. You'll run into trouble definitely if you try to add things later on when you're halfway through an animation. So I highly recommend thinking ahead, planning and making all of the layers and shapes that you wanna animate. To begin, we're gonna come up to the window menu and then we're gonna come down and click timeline. We're gonna be presented with two choices here. If we come to the drop down, we can either have a video or a frame animation. And to do an animated GIF or GIF, we're gonna choose frame animation and then click the button in the middle. Let's change our panel options and just make this one as big as possible. So we can see we have a default one frame and the length is zero seconds or no delay. So basically the way we animate things, it's really simple. We set something up how we want it, we hit new frame, we move something to there. We hit new frame, we move something where we want it. New frame again, something where we want it. Now if I come back to the start and hit play, you can see it goes through the frames. I'm gonna undo this back to my starting frame and show you a much easier way to get things to animate. Now for my animation, I'm gonna start with nothing on the screen except the background. Chuck's gonna pop up and then speech bubble's gonna appear, disappear and Chuck's gonna pop back down. So really my first frame should have this one hidden and should have Chuck moved well out of the way. That's my true first frame, so I'm gonna make it a little bit longer. I'm gonna go for two seconds. And then I'm gonna hit the new frame button to add in my second. This one I wanna put back to no delay. I'm immediately gonna add a second frame and I'm gonna set up the second frame to have Chuck Norris exactly where I want him in the end. So round about there. You can see at the moment it's very jerky between one or the other but Photoshop has something awesome inbuilt and to access it we click and hold shift to select both of these at once and then we come to this button here which is tween and that stands for in between. Basically we tell it how many frames to add in between our starting and ending position and it will pad that out and make the animation for us. For this one I'm going to go with 8. Let's rewind and hit play. Two second gap. Chuck comes up and the animation is over. Now you'll notice even though it's set to zero seconds, it runs a little bit jerkier in Photoshop than it will in the final exported animation. But don't worry too much about that. For me, I'm gonna continue with my animation. So I'm gonna create another new frame. This time I'm gonna turn on what was previously a hidden layer. I'm gonna hold shift and click the other frame before it. And then I'm going to go to tween once more. This time we're doing opacity, which is already ticked and I'm gonna put it down to about five frames. Now we'll find that it animates the opacity automatically from zero to 100. Gonna do a similar thing once again. I'll create my finishing frame. I'll turn off the layer and then I will hold shift, tween. This time I want it to be quite fast, only two frames in between. And finally, I'm gonna add my last frame and in it, I'm gonna move Chuck Norris down off the screen once more. Select both frames, come to tween, this time only about four frames. Now the frame where my text is up on the screen for the longest time, I'm gonna make that pause and be on for one second, just for a little bit of emphasis and to get that subliminal message working. Let's review, back to the start, hit play, two second gap, up comes Chuck, here comes the speech bubble, one second pause, Chuck goes away. Perfect, I'm ready to export this one. And to do that, I'm gonna come up to File, Save for Web. You might find that yours looks particularly patchy and that's because the colors might be set to something lower. Setting them lower is a great way to save on file size, but if you want maximum quality, you need to have them on the maximum 256. If you're only seeing JPEG here, well, you'll need to come to the drop down and change that to GIF or GIF and that will give you the animation options here. Another thing to note is the size down here. So currently it's 635 kilobytes. It's pretty big for an image. 
you can come to the width and height here and put in something much smaller and it will update the size over here straight away. So that got it down to less than a third. I can preview one more time. You can see how much more smoothly it runs. And I'm going to put mine on forever so it just keeps on looping and looping and looping. Now I can hit save and save my file. So here's our file running in the browser. This is exactly how someone would see it on a web page. And it seems to work pretty flawlessly. This is a really simple example, but obviously you can do a lot more than this. Well, there's our animated images. Let's get on to the video. So that's frame animation, but what if we want to try the video? Well, we can convert an existing one by coming to this panel menu here and going to convert to video timeline. It looks like not much has changed, but we need to expand our various layers. Make it a little bit more room for this. We can see that we have keyframes for all of these events. This is a very simple example. So let's look at something that's actually more real world. Let's hit play and you should recognize this as the background to the intro that I have at the start of all of my videos. And basically I had some stripes which I imported from Illustrator and then I do animations moving them around the screen. You'll notice that the audio is also supported and it's really quite straightforward to do this. Let's do one more layer. I'm going to take stripes 2 and I'm going to make a copy of it. You can see instantly here it appears. So what I'm going to do to make this a lot easier is to hide everything else just so we can see what we're working with. So let's come back to our keyframe and let's move it somewhere completely different. And then we might come further into the clip. We click this button to add a new keyframe and we move it where we want for that. And then I'm going to move it further in, add another keyframe. I'm going to bring it back here. And then we're going to click this shortcut button to finally go to where we want it to end. And this time we'll end it just in shot. We'll bring it back to the start and we can see that it's followed our animation. Compared to the frame animation, all of the tweening is completely automatic in this. And like before, we can also do it with opacity and style. However, that's not what I choose to do for these ones. So let's really spice things up and import a video. I'm going to shrink this down to simulate picture in picture. I'm going to hit the tick. And if I bring my playhead along, we should see that the video, this time from one of my Lego drone reviews, starts to play here. So I can move this around on my timeline to where I want it to start and finish playing. I can also drag the start and end to do some cropping. And of course, by changing the height, I can decide what's above and below it. So as you can see, this computer is not really a powerhouse, but it gets the job done. You can set up picture in picture. You can use this as like a dirty and cheap version of After Effects if Photoshop is all you have. When you're finished, it's quite easy to export. We come up to File, Export, and then Render Video. We have two options here. We can use the Media Encoder, and then we can choose our format just like you would for any other video program. Or we can come to Photoshop Image Sequence and then set whatever format we want there, and it will export frame by frame, JPEGs, TIFFs, bitmaps, whatever you need for your application. When we're ready, we just hit render and our video will be made. Well, that's it. Hopefully you've learned something new and something valuable. I'll be back soon with more 3D printing and other creative content. Until then, thanks so much for watching and happy photoshopping. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.